That, but that's not that big of a deal. And then we could use our straight slot here to create that kind of slot geometry there like so. So now all we got to do, ah, hit escape. Darn it. Try to get out of the command. I hit escape. That is frustrating. I think on my next run, I'm going to have to make sure that I, uh, that I don't do that again. That is really frustrating. Hey, what's up, everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today I'm going to try to qualify for the upcoming CAD vs. CAD tournament. If you want to get more information on this, you can go to TooTallToby.com slash tournaments. There's a big FAQ here to explain how to start getting involved. But the first question here is, how can I get involved in the next tournament? And the answer is, create a free account at TooTallToby.com, and then click here. This is the 2026 Winter Open Tournament, and in order to qualify, you have to click here to bring up the drawings, and you have to model each of these parts right in order in one single video. So the first qualifying part, the second qualifying part, and the final qualifying part. So I'm gonna give this a try right now in SolidWorks. It's my first attempt. I might end up having to do this more than once. When you're ready to complete, compete, you click on this button here, and that button is going to bring up this clock that we see over here. Make sure the clock is on screen while you're competing. And remember, you can compete using any 3D CAD system. All right, here we go in three, two, one, go. So this first part is in ABS and millimeters. I'm gonna use my ABS millimeters template. Top plane, begin a sketch, S key, rectangle, single click here, move my mouse, let go of my mouse. This is gonna be 80 high by 183 wide. S key, extrude. This is gonna come up to a height of 16 millimeters. S key, fill it. I'm gonna throw in a fillet here on all four corners. Let's get all four corners at the same time. And we're gonna make that fillet a radius of 20 millimeters. Pick this face here, S S key begin a sketch and I'm going to uh, S key slot. I'll use I'll use a uh, straight slot here. Going to wake up this center point and wake up this center point and that way I can create that slot going between those center points. S key dimension, the width of that slot or the radius on that slot looks like it is a 15 millimeters actually diameter or width. 15 millimeters for that diameter or width. S key Center line, drop in a center line here. Looks like my uh, fully defined sketch color is white and that surface is also kind of like a bright yellow. So it's really hard to see where I'm fully defined there. But S key extrude cut, right mouse button through wall, right mouse button. And uh, maybe I'll just quick change the color of this part to make it a little easier for everybody to see. And then I'm gonna go here to front plane, begin a sketch, get normal two, S key, begin, a, I'll probably do this as a rectangle. It's probably easy to do this as a rectangle. Uh, this is going to come up to a height of 50, and it's going to have a width here of 100, and then that is going to be midpoint right there. Uh, looks like there's also a hole going through kind of the center of this, so I could just drop in this hole right now. That looks like it's got a radius of 24, so a diameter of 48. S key extrude, and this one is going to have this contour going out midplane to a depth of, well, I guess this is just going to go to 80, right? Just come out to there. Yeah. And then pick, pick this face here. Again, pick this front plane, begin a sketch, take this guy here, convert entities, and then I'm going to uh, maybe take that and offset it. Or I could create another. I guess I could either offset it or create another one. I mean, radius 24, radius 36. So I guess it's an offset of 12. So I'll just do it with the offset there. So 12, and then create a line that comes here to close that off, a line that comes here to close that off, and S key extrude. That one's going to go out to a distance of 106. Right mouse button in the background, mid plane, right mouse button again to finish that. And then the final feature here is just that cut extrude coming up from this face here. So pick this face, begin a sketch, orient the view, sketch a rectangle we'll just do a rectangle like so s key dimension and it looks like this rectangle has a width of 50 and it is center line symmetric so maybe we could just grab a center line here bring it across and then make that center line horizontal and it looks like the width to i guess we could draw in another center line here looks like it's got like a width to the center line it's kind of an interesting dimension there 76 and then we'll take that rectangle. So we'll just do like a right click, select chain, hold control, pick this guy here, let go of control mirror, S key extrude, and make sure that that cut extrude is going in the opposite direction. So reverse direction, right click through wall and right click. 
And, oh, yeah, that looks like a pretty good model there. Let's take a look at our sensor. We're trying to come up with a mass of 400 grams, and our mass is 399.95. That is within tolerance. So we're good with that one. Click here and finish model one. And now we move on to our second drawing here. So our second drawing is a sheet metal drawing. This one looks kind of interesting. Uh, we're going to do new. This one is in plain carbon steel and MMGS. And this one with sheet metal here, I'm probably going to just start with that kind of L shape looking at this thing from the front view. So we could create this L shape here. It goes down 38. It comes over by 70. We can take these guys here and make them for construction. And then we can go into our sheet metal uh, base flange tab and just bring this thing out. I'm going to tab, 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 tab down here to the uh, sheet metal parameters. Default wall thickness is five. Default bend radius is seven. That is going to the correct direction. And it looks like this is going to come out to a depth of 80. Now to chamfer off this front corner, we could certainly use a chamfer. We could also just draw this in there with a, um, a set of dimensions. So this comes over 33, and then it comes up this way at an angle, and then we can just put in what that angle is. So you could do that either way. Uh, both are valid solutions there, and it looks like that is 30 in that direction, 60 in the other direction. S key extrude. Once again, we're using a color that we really can't see the sketches that well, so it probably could maybe refine my dark mode a little bit here. For the, the bend relief for this uh, bend, that's sticking up. I'll just do this with a slot. Um, I think that's probably the easiest way to get this geometry in place in this case. There's, of course, more than one way to accomplish this, but I think this slot here is six, and then it looks like it's 16. I'm going to hold shift here, 16 to the max tangency, and then it is over here at a distance of, what is that, 40? 40 millimeters, and then I can just use that as my cut relief. So we could do through wall there. And then I can take this edge here, and from sheet metal, we could do edge flange and bring this up. Now, of course, with sheet metal, you always have to be on the lookout for stuff like this. Like, why is this default to offset? I know that happens to some of you guys out there. So make sure it's not set to offset. Make sure your flange position is set to the inside. You want this to be flush with this existing edge here. So flange uh, uh, offset there uh, to the inside. And then um, we could really, we could just create all this geometry in this one sketch. We could say edit sketch here and start getting in here and creating all this geometry. Geometry. Of course, in sheet metal, there doesn't seem to be a good way to work with contours, so you do have to go through and trim the geometry when you're done with it, but that's not that big of a deal. And then we could use our straight slot here to create that kind of slot geometry there, like so. And so now all we got to do, ah, hit escape. Darn it. Try to get out of the command. I hit escape. That is frustrating. I think on my next run, I'm going to have to make sure that I, uh, that I don't do that again. That is really frustrating. I was on a good little run there. We were cooking. All right, let's try this again. So we'll go circle right here, like so. S key trim, trim that up, like so. S key slot, drop in a slot here, like so. Uh, right click, choose select, S key dimension. Create a dimension here for the width of the slot there at 20 for the center to center distance there. So I can just pick this guy at 42 for the uh, height from the bottom of the part to the center there at 116 or 136 to the peak, I guess. And then we'll pick this guy and this guy and make them tangent. And what are we missing here? We still are not fully constrained. That guy's not tangent either, huh? So I can just pick that point and say make tangent. There we go, nice and fully constrained. Finish, and we are uh, we got one more feature to add in here, which is the fillet, so S key fillet. One nice thing here is you can do a little window select there and grab that uh, corner, and that is gonna be a radius of 15 millimeters. So we're looking for 359.3 grams here. Let's control Q to rebuild. Look at that, 359.3. That's what we want from that one too. So click here when finished, and now we're on to our final model here for this qualification run. So we're gonna go over here to this third and final model. Oh, this one looks pretty easy, just a revolve basically. A revolve with a couple of holes in it. That's what I like. Nice easy one to finish things off. So plain carbon steel and inches. Ooh, I like this too, inches. And so we're gonna go front plane, begin a sketch S key. I'm gonna create just half of this and then mirror it at the end so i'll create this shape here kind of like this uh, i'll come all the way over and close that off maybe i'll also create those other lines here just in the same sketch just to kind of create the whole thing there all at once and then we could do a trim trim this and then we could take this line here and make it for construction and now we can start adding in our our uh, diameter dimension so that central bore 1.625 looks like that outside shape there is two inches looks like the Oh, 1.625 to this point. Wow, interesting. 1.625 to that point. Okay, not to the central bore. 
Well, do we have a central bore there? Do we have a, yeah, oh yeah, 1.25. Control Z to undo that, 1.25, there we go. And what is the angle on that thing? Do we get an angle for that? 45 degrees, both ends, kind of a weird spot, the way that that angle is defined. Nope, not to the midpoint. Thank you, SolidWorks, not what I wanted there. And that's gonna be 45 degrees. 45, there we go. And then I could also draw in, I guess, a center line here to get a double dimension since I'm going to be mirroring this. So the total height of this thing is three inches. The outside diameter here is four inches. And the thickness in the middle there is 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Nice fully defined sketch there. Features revolve. This is going to revolve about this axis here. Yes, good. Pick this face, we're going to sketch, orient our view, and this one is going to be, I'll make my bolt circle here, so the bolt circle is going to be three inches, and then I'll put my circle here on the quadrant point at 0 0.375, and then I'll take that and make it for construction, S key extrude cut, right mouse button, through wall, right mouse button, and then we'll do our circular pattern here using this feature for the pattern, using this face for the axis and making that at four and then we can pick this face here and we can pick the top plane of our model and we can choose to mirror and that's going to be just a bodies to mirror probably could have just picked the top plane right bodies to mirror and then finally oh it looks like i missed a fillet there roll back before that uh feature add that fillet in there that fillet is at 0 0.125 Let's go. And so we're looking here for 3.45 pounds. Let's see. Control Q. 3.45 pounds. Dead on. So here we'll say click here when finish model 3. And done. And so now you see that once you finish model 3, that gives us a report here that says that our uh, total time was 10 minutes and 6 seconds. Not bad. Not bad. I think I could probably do it a little faster. But I have read, understand, and agree to the tournament and leaderboard rules. Choose submit. And now I'm going to add this run to my uh, to my uh, user profile here at tutaltoby.com and that way the video will show up here and that way everybody can watch the video and see how I did it in just 10 minutes. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this run. Don't worry, I'm going to be back with more. I think I can get this a little bit faster. I'm going to try and get it under seven minutes. Three models in under seven minutes. Let's see if I can do it. And uh, I can't wait to see what Dom did here. I'll bet his are even faster. I'll bet he's getting a sub five minute time here for his three models. So we'll see what that is once we get that unobfuscated and we'll share that video as well. All right, everybody, good luck on your tournament runs. Don't forget you can compete using any 3D CAD system and I'll see you in the next tournament qualifying run.